Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be doing a cool toned fox eye tutorial. Fox eyes are basically the exact same thing as a cat eye. So <laughs> I have already done this video before. I did it with just like neutral to warm toned shades um, and I break it down step by step. So I will link that down below as well. It's up in the info card so you can check that out. Today was a very gloomy, rainy day and very chilly. It felt amazing. So I was totally in the mood to just stay cozy in my sweatshirt and do a cool toned tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video please subscribe and let's get started so I'm gonna prime my skin I'm using the Laura Mercier pure canvas perfecting primer this is one of my favorites this is just a good everyday primer I really like it I feel like primer doesn't make a huge difference with my foundation and the way that it wears but this one I feel like my foundation usually lasts just a little bit longer so I have some new foundations here from NARS they sent over their new what is this called soft matte complete foundation look how beautiful this is I love this packaging NARS's packaging is by far one of my favorites out of all makeup brands it's just so luxe and chic to me I'm actually gonna go with the darker one Vienna 4.5 and then there's also a concealer which I'd like to try that as well this is what the bottle looks like up close just so chic reminds me of when I first started getting into makeup and stuff and then it comes out like this I'm gonna be trying out a new brush from Sigma. This is the Sigma F80 Air Flat Kabuki Brush. I haven't used a brush like this in forever to apply my foundation, so I thought I'd try it out today. That is a little bit light and that is very full coverage. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my anti-pollution drops from Drunk Elephant. It is a little bit too light and this will kind of warm it up a little bit and deepen it just a touch. Whatever's left over on my brush, it's gonna hit the nose. It's beautiful. It does give just like that soft matte finish. It looks like skin, honestly. It doesn't have like a crazy finish to it, which I actually really like. I don't like when things are way too glowy. I like a do, just nothing too overboard. Probably because my skin gets oily throughout the day. It's so pretty. It just has a really unique finish. Very, very beautiful. And even though that seemed like full coverage going on, I think it kind of sheared out to medium. It could also be because I added those anti-pollution drops. I don't know why they're called that. I'm just gonna call it deep bronzy. Yeah, that is really, really pretty. I'm excited to see how this wears. I'm just gonna be at my house all day. Ruben's parents are actually supposed to be here in five minutes. I'm hoping they're running late. We're gonna be cooking and stuff. I meant to film this earlier, but I looked everywhere, up and down all over my house for this brow pencil from Fenty. They sent over their brow stuff a while ago. I remember setting aside the color that I needed and I think I accidentally gave away the color that I needed and kept the one ones that don't match me. I can find the ones that don't match me and not the ones that do. I spent too much time doing that and now I'm finally sitting down to film so I might end up needing to stop filming when they get here, but we'll see what happens. This is the Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I have the shade Vanilla or Light 2. This seems like it would be mainly for like spot concealing. Anything that's in a container like this, that's just like what I automatically assume it's for. I could be wrong though. This might work out really well underneath my eyes, but I'm gonna try it under the eyes. It's just like a little pot concealer like this. Tap a little bit in there and apply it under the eyes. That's a little too light for me. I also forgot I had another concealer that I'd like to try, but that does feel really nice. It's like a thin, creamy sort of feeling. But yeah, it's just gonna be too bright. It's actually not gonna cover what I need it to cover. So I'm gonna try this one from Fenty. It's the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer. This also might be too light, we'll, we'll see. I was trying to use different product, oh yeah. Yikes. I was trying to use different products because I feel like I'm using the same stuff all the time, but this is like my winter shade. I'm using the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer. This is in the shade 120. Way too light, so I'm going to grab those deep bronzy drops again and just pop that in with it, and hopefully this works. Okay, I'm gonna have to add a little bit of my concealer that I've been using just because it's kind of working, but not exactly. So I'm just gonna go in with the Pat McGrath concealer in shade nine, <coughs> excuse me, shade nine. Have you been out recently and had to cough, ac and not accidentally, but you, you have to cough and you're just kind of like, <coughs> like read the room. I'm really loving this foundation. I think it's beautiful. It has such a pretty finish to it. I can see that being a nice like everyday foundation, nothing too crazy. So I wanted to use this cause I don't think I've used this on camera yet. Maybe I have. I got this in the spring Sephora sale, which oh my gosh, I just got a bunch of stuff from Sephora. I'm so excited. 
they've got so much stuff out right now that like just recently launched so I'm gonna have a haul coming up very soon but I don't think I ever showed this in a video this is the Tom Ford shade in illuminate little duo palette I have worn it but I think only once so I'm gonna try it today and just start stippling it on the skin a lot of times people ask me like oh is this worth it talking about makeup and I I'm the worst person to ask because I truly believe that I could literally hate something and you could be so in love with it and vice versa so I never want to say something's worth it or not worth it just because makeup is so opinion based and it's just based on your personal experience. I would say that this is not worth the price because now that there's so many other cream products coming out that are just the same if not better. So like the Fenty cream bronzers, like those are a fraction of the price of this palette and they're better. And this only comes in three shades where Fenty comes in like a bajillion shades. So I would just say if you're looking for a cream bronzer, skip out on this one I feel like it was really talked up a lot but it was because it was one of the only cream bronzer products that were out for the longest time I think with confidence I can say it's not worth the price and there's something else that you can get that will do the exact same thing I think it also smells gross this smells like really cheapy, which is weird. Kind of like a crayon box. And then I have some stuff from Lauren Conrad Beauty. When I saw that she came out with a makeup line, I was just, I was so excited. I love Lauren Conrad. I was obsessed with Laguna Beach, The Hills, all of that. I've got all of it on DVD. I picked up, I think one of everything that she had and I've been using these the last probably like week or two and this is beautiful. I'm gonna go in with the liquid highlighter. I believe this only comes in one shade and then I also have the lip and cheek tint. Oh, this is in the color Peony. I wasn't sure if it had other shades. I couldn't remember, but they did. This highlighter is in the color Pearl. And I'm popping it right on the cheekbones. It's a beautiful gold and it's so subtle, which I love. It reminds me so much of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Like slightly more natural and easier to work with. It's such a beautiful liquid highlighter. I can see this actually being like one of my new go-tos. It's just so pretty. I don't remember what shades they had because this just works out for my complexion. If I was a little bit more fair, I don't know if this would work. It's just kind of like my exact skin color, but in a highlighter. So it just has that like beautiful shine. Then I'm gonna go in with the blush. It kind of has like um almost a jelly feeling to it, which I think if you told me that, I probably would be turned off by the way that that sounds, but it feels really good on the skin. It blends out really nicely and just feels really hydrating. And then I'm also gonna bring this up on the forehead. I haven't used this on the lips yet though, but I can see how, because it kind of has that like jelly sort of feeling to it. I can see how this is like a universal cheek and lip tint. I'm gonna powder with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. Then I want to bronze up a little bit more. I'm gonna use the NARS Laguna Bronzer. I haven't used this in so long. This is such a good classic bronzer. I feel like almost everyone has tried this at least once in their life. This is the packaging and then this is a brand new one actually. This is the inside of it. I'm just gonna bronze up the face. Fun fact, when I worked at Bare Minerals, on my lunch break, I would go up to Sephora and look at all of the NARS stuff and I mean, everything else Sephora had too. But back then, like they didn't have all these different brands like they do now. They just had like, the classics and I just remember looking at the NARS Laguna bronzer and the orgasm blush and they had like the duo and then they came out with a blush palette and it was like the first time like a face palette had ever come out and it was like just the thing and I remember being so excited and wanting it so bad. This bronzer is just kind of like bringing me back to that. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of powder blush. This is new from Hourglass and it is beautiful. This is the Sublime Flush blush and it looks like these. I'm just picking it up on an F40 brush from Sigma and I'm going over my cheeks. It just adds like a nice little pinky color. I'm gonna move on to the eyebrows. So I was talking about that Fenty brow pencil that I really wanted to try. So I'm gonna try it in the color medium blonde, which I like darker eyebrows on myself. I like them to be like ashier and more brown than blonde. Usually blonde brow products will end up looking green on me or just too orangey. So we're just gonna try it, see what happens. I've got other brow products I can use instead if this doesn't work out. So it's got like a little paddle brush. And then on this side, it's just like a really tiny defined 
pencil. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, this isn't really doing anything. <laughs> It's too light. I'm gonna try this one from Hourglass. It's in Dark Brunette. We'll try this instead. The only thing with this pencil is that it seems a little spotty. I don't know. Isn't that a little weird? Maybe it's just me. I'm gonna go in with that Rimmel Wonderful Brow just because this has a little bit of warmth to it and I think that these brows are pretty cool toned. Okay, so I just primed with the Painterly Paint Pot and set it with powder and now I'm gonna do some eyeshadow. I will link my other fox eye tutorial up here. I go over so many different tips and tricks for giving a more elongated effect to your eyes. If you want like that cat eye look, it's basically the same thing as a cat eye. I will be doing that today with with my Makeup Geek eyeshadows. I just can't stay away from these. I love them. And I'm gonna do a very cool toned look. I'm gonna start with Beach Please from Makeup Geek. And I'm gonna follow my lower lash line going up. Put all of the pressure here and just flick outwards. And then flick it in. I'm gonna go into Bedrock from Makeup Geek and just keep doing the same thing. I'm using a Smith 247. I got some new ones. These are brand new ones. I had like one set of all of their fluffy eye brushes, but I've had it for a couple years. So it's time to get some new ones. I'll still use the old ones because they're fine, but I'm going to go into Creme Brulee from Makeup Geek on a rougher 16 brush. Just kind of pat it in there and just go over the whole lid area. I'm going to go into Clean Slate from Makeup Geek on a rougher 03 brush. Same thing, just building up that wing. Going into Bedrock to blend that out. Add more of that gray hue to it. I'm gonna go into Smoke Signal, which is like a charcoal-y gray black color. And I'm gonna take it on a Precise Lip Line L06 brush from Sigma. I love this brush for eyeshadow or like eyeliner. I never use it for my lips. It's just like softly creating a wing and blending it out little by little and then building up the color and making it more dramatic. The same thing that we would do with eyeshadow. It's just we're doing it with liner and it makes it look really soft and you can make it as smoky as you want. I love blending it out and making it just like a diffused version of a winged liner. Carrying a little bit down on the lower lash line just so that this connects. I don't want much on the lower lash line, so I'm just gonna blend this on the outer corner just so there's not like a separation there. I'm happy with that. I am going to add the little inner corner dealio there, but first I'm just gonna kind of like brighten up the lower lash line with just some powder. So I want this to be very blank. I'm going to use that smoke signal eyeshadow with the lip brush, really tap off the excess and just do the inner corner tear duct. And that just kind of like goes into that line and makes it look more feline like, cat like, fox eye like. Just using a little bit of face powder just to brighten up right underneath the wing on both sides, the inner and the outer, and bring that along the lash line. Okay, I'm gonna go into the Fenty Full Frontal Mascara and apply this to the upper and lower lashes mainly to the outer part of the lashes. And I'm just very lightly gonna touch it on the bottom just so they have some definition, but nothing crazy. I have a bunch of lipsticks that I got last year around the fall from MAC. I never ended up using them, so I have them here. I'm just gonna do oak lip pencil, I'm sorry. I just, I love it too much. That needs to get deepened up. I'm gonna use cork from MAC. I'm gonna grab my Tweety, which is like a peachy, soft beige kind of a color. It's a little bit warmer than I was wanting. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of Viva Glam 2, and then I'll usually go in with Oak lip pencil and just kind of like blend out all the edges so everything kind of blends together seamlessly. I'm gonna go into the Anastasia Eleganza false lashes. I am going to apply them so that the outer corner goes up a little bit and goes with that whole elongated cat eye effect. I don't know how I feel about the lashes. I think they're a little chunky, but I think they work. This is the look up close. I really love this foundation. It just gives like just a really nice skin-like effect to the skin. I've been loving doing the more like cat eye, fox eye look on myself. I think it looks just really different from what I do normally because I do like a more rounded, 
blown out eyeshadow effect. It just definitely changes the face a lot and gives just a more chic look, I think. So if you end up trying this out, please tag me on Instagram. Uh, send me a picture. I would love to see what the look looks like. If you are a little confused as the like difference between this whole technique and how I normally do my makeup, make sure to check out the fox eye tutorial that I did already. I give a ton of tips and tricks that break it down and kind of explain the difference between the two techniques. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed following along. Please subscribe and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.